So, you're mad that Pokemon cut your favorite Pokemon from the game. What's up, right, guys? Boy, Patty Trills, aka Young Johnny Bravo, aka not sitting in this chair correctly. I'm just gonna kind of break down on what's been happening in the Pokemon community as of recently. So, if you guys don't know, the new games Pokemon Sword and Shield are coming out. Uh, it would be technically tonight or tomorrow, depending on you guys are seeing this. Tomorrow. Um, it would be tomorrow. Uh, November 14th really late or November 15th depending on whatever you guys want to pick it up The point is the new games are coming out and there is a lot of controversy that has been going around for months about these games For a lot of different reasons and I kind of just want to break it down to you guys explain What they are if you guys have not been in the Pokemon community or if you guys have been underneath the rock or if you just you Guys were just excited for a new game to begin with right? So pretty much what's been going on Pokemon Sword and Shield are the first main series games We I don't know if you really consider let's go that came out the year before to be a main series game But anyways Sword and Shield is the first main series game generation 8 of Pokemon like the next big step towards Pokemon and they started off with seeing a lot of Controversial things that a lot of people have been holding them true to and I feel like from a marketing aspect, Pokemon really didn't handle this well. So from the get-go, the biggest one was bring back the National Dex because a lot of people, if you don't know, um, not every Pokemon is going to be in Sword and Shield. About half of them have been cut, or over half technically, uh, with Gen 8 coming in. Which is unfortunate. It's not like a game breaker to me. Like, yes, I would love to have all Pokemon in Pokemon games solely just from a competitive aspect because when I play games, normally I want to play using like new mons to beat the game. And then like after that, it's just solely from a competitive aspect. I would just like to have multiple options for draft leagues and Wi-Fi battles and so on and so forth. So, like, yes, it sucks that things have been cut out, but it's not, like, the end of the world because there's still a lot of Pokemon in the game. There's still, you know, they picked a good amount of ones. Yes, some of my favorites aren't in it, but it is what it is, you know, right? I can always play a previous game. Like, I own all of them, so it's not like I'm shit out of luck. So, it's not the reason that they're gone, I think, is a lot of the people's issues. I think the reason that a lot of people are complaining is because the reason that they're gone it doesn't necessarily equal to what is being replaced. So, the reason why I say it like this is because the reason why they said half the mods would be gone is that they are taking more time for um for animations and to better the story and because they just didn't have enough time to import um, the models in the game which raises questions as in like what how because they're models so to back that claim up because people were calling them out um the community well not everyone but like people within the community were calling out game freak saying that doesn't really make sense how would you how come you can't just import models in the game because you're reusing models from previous games like let's go reuse a lot of models from sun and moon but they just made it hd and they looked fan fucking tastic i think let's go is a beautiful looking game um it's not a great game like it was not my favorite to play but the game looks good without a doubt and you have sun and moon which has all generation 7 mods that you could literally just import over and make them hd models and just like you know fill them out because the 3ds plays at 240p and i don't know who the fuck thought that was a good idea but it is what it is right so then pokemon then re you know reinstated in like um, an interview saying no we didn't use older models we had to build them from scratch but since 3d models already exist it kind of looked like ones that we previously had and people were like oh okay i get it like it's a new engine possibly you know they're putting new pokemon in so that is already new models right off the bat so if you're doing that in whatever new engine that you're building it off of then you would just build you would then recreate the mods that you've you know, you've picked that you've decided to live the thanos slap or snap and you would then just create that then and totally fine right well news has kind of came out that that's kind of a fucking lie so like as i'm explaining this i just want everyone to take a step back even you chair like if you could just take a step back um shout out to ob seats take a step back it's a video game so we're just gonna start off the bat saying it's just a video game there's way more important things in life going on 
on this planet, but I understand why people enjoy video games and why they're taking it such a huge part of their life because video games are very important. It's an art form people deserve. And plus, like, the video game industry has been so rocky with us recently with making garbage games or not giving us full games and trying to get away with it at still $60 a price because $60 is a lot plus tax. You know, it's so, like, I get it. So, word comes out. Um, that's pretty much proven with evidence of showing, um, how the models have been made. They are exact replicas of models from previous games. So, that obviously draws a lot of questions, because it's like, okay, there are older models, they are models that you are reusing. So why couldn't you put them all into the game? And then it's like, okay... I don't care that you're reusing old models because like I stated, not like I think everyone else would collectively agree, let's go use older models, but they all looked great because it was actually HD and, and 720 or 1080 if you want to, depending if it was doctor mobile. Um, they all looked great. So I don't think anyone was concerned that it didn't look good because everyone liked it. Um, why lie on the idea why lie saying that they weren't reused when I feel like Pokemon and Game Freak should just know this that like how many years has it been straight that their games have been completely ripped like two to three weeks before release date and have been data mined and had the metadata like how many collect like I can name Omega, Ruby, Alpha, Sapphire, Sun and Moon, Usum, and Let's Go, and Sword and Shield. For five years, their games have been ripped before the games came out. Knowing that, because it's five fucking years, that's half a decade. There's no way that Game Freak and Pokemon doesn't know that their shit gets ripped before the games come out. I mean, I don't rip my games because I don't have the technology for that, and obviously it's wrong legally on this video. Um, I mean, but I do own all my copies or whatever. And I, I like to support and buy buy the games. I don't buy two copies because I'm not that rich. But, like, I'll go out and buy one. Um, especially since there are $40 on the 3DS. Um, my thing is... <laughs> knowing that the community... Because I feel like we're one of the only few communities that are, like, so tech savvy with getting into these games and getting all the information out. That, like, you don't see the Call of Duty community, like, ripping Call of Duty two weeks before it's out and telling everyone about the... It's always, like, speculations and trailers or, like... You know, it's, like, I feel like the Pokemon community is one of the few communities that are, like, super, like, tech-savvy, dev-heavy, like, into getting information like this before the game is out. So, knowing that, why would a game for you just be, like, up front with us? Because here's the thing. I don't mind that you took the game. I don't mind you took half the Pokemon out of the game. That's fine. But to blatantly lie and say, oh, we're we using new models is just a bad business stat. Like, is this a bad business stance? Because here's the thing. I don't personally give a fuck because I'm still going to play the game and enjoy it. Yes, I'll criticize it and I will critique it. But, like, I still want to play it and, like, fully understand the finished product. Because it's like, yes, there are things that I'm not 100% on board with that they've done. But I'm not also just, like, a mindless consumer who just buys anything Pokemon related. Like, I want to still give it the most benefit of the doubt. Play it. Digest it. Understand it. And then give an answer on what I felt on it. Like, yeah, they still secure their bag. They still get the $60 out of me. But as a consumer, I still feel like, you know, I feel better about myself knowing that I can criticize something to an intellectual level, right? So, another thing people are complaining about is, so that happens. The graphics aren't that great. Which graphics, I don't really give a fuck because Pokemon's never had great graphics. I mean, we fought fucking JPEGs for decades. Like, we... we Pokemon, like, JPEGs weren't even, like, it didn't even come, like, we fought GIFs in Gen 5, like, the graphics have never got to me, it's always just been aesthetics is all I care about, and I think, like, Let's Go had a nice aesthetic, I think Sun and Moon have a nice aesthetic, I think X, Y, and Auras have a nice aesthetic, um, 
and so on. Like, I think all the previous games have nice aesthetics. I think they fit for what the point is, especially for a handheld game at the time, right? So I think Sword and Shield has a nice aesthetic. I don't think the graphics are mind-blowing. Like, I'm not expecting to play this game and have, like, God of War graphics or, you know, like death stranding graph i'm not expecting that as long as it just as long as it's just aesthetically pleasing which i think it is from what i've seen from gameplay i think the game is aesthetically pleasing which you know fills my me fills my needs you know i don't need every game to look realistic like as long as the games you know play fine is all i care about you know um but even like so the graphics thing people can complain about that's fine it's not really my thing uh, another thing people are complaining about is the fact that a lot of moves have been taken out, taken out. So like pursuit and other moves and items have been removed, and obviously megas and Z moves and stuff like that have been removed and whatnot. And yes, that sucks. I liked megas in competitive. I thought megas were really good in competitive. I didn't really care too much for Z crystals in competitive, but like it served a purpose and they weren't too busted. But now that everything can Dynamax, it just feels like a more busted Z move of that. And I don't know how that's gonna rock the meta. I don't really know. We'll obviously find out when we get to that point in the competitive scene but like um another thing people are complaining about is the story the story is really short they're like oh the story some guy clocked in at 14 and a half hours when he got to the champion and there's not that much post game and it's like that's pretty fucking short I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty short. Granted, the person said, like, they're saying on average the story would be about 18 to 20 hours. That's pretty short for a Pokemon game. Like, usually you get 18 to 20 hours if you're, like, speed running or, like, solo running something. Like, if you're, like, deliberately. Like, when I do a sleep lock, like, I did Fire Red, Leaf Green, I sped up and it was still 11 and a half hours. And I was speeding up, like, all of it, ultimately, and grinding. And eventually, towards the end, I just start rare canning shit. Like, it still took me almost 12 hours to beat. You know, or, or like when I sped up all through Platinum with Mail Combi, it still took me like 10 and a half hours to beat. So it's like the fact that non-sped up, the game is only 18 hours long. Yeah, it raises a question that why is the story so short? Because most Pokemon games, the story is like 30 hours. I mean, I remember it took me for Usum, it took because so many goddamn cutscenes. It took me 40 hours maybe to beat that game it's pretty long because like you gotta do a lot of grinding there's all the trials you gotta go to the islands there's all the cutscenes and blah, you know like there's a lot going on in those games and uh the fact that the story is so short but yet the price is higher does raise questions now here's like my ultimate consensus with everything on what i feel about sword and shield I get the concern of consumers. I understand you're spending $60, you want $60 worth of stuff. I understand the frustration of being lied to when now proven that something else has happened. I get it. I just think the execution isn't well. Because here's my thing, I, I, I've t said this before in other Let's Play videos or whatever you wanna say, is you're never gonna teach anyone or move anyone about anything if your direct approach to move that person is to yell you're never gonna teach anyone anything by yelling because yelling doesn't solve anything and i know it's like over tweets and posts and stuff but still like if the connotation is just inherently negative and it's unnecessarily negative you will never get your point across to the person you're trying to get your point to so for example um if i was like the type of person who was very upset that my infernape didn't fucking make sword and shield and i was also the type of person who found out that the sprites were actually reused when they lied to me saying that they weren't i wouldn't go off making this hashtag game freak lied i wouldn't go out i would you know probably make a video but be way more respectful like respectful about it or like make something informative or something that can actually raise questions and have some form of backbone to argument so like i said i'm still going to buy the games there are concerns that i have 
and I am going to criticize this game. I do criticize everything that I play. I do criticize things that I love. Nothing that I love is absolutely 100% perfect. Even my favorite movies or favorite video games or favorite albums or bands or anything that I love personally, I still always go within the mindset of regardless of how much I love something, I can still take a step back and like criticize it for what it is, right? So, like, am I still going to buy Sword and Shield? Yes. Am I still very excited to play Sword and Shield? Yes. You know, I'm still excited to play these games. I'm still excited to do and make content on it. I'm, But I am also going to criticize it like anything else that I would. You know, so will I do a pre on this game? Probably. I probably will. I probably will go into a more in-depth thing of what I feel about the game. Because I've said this on multiple occasions as well on Twitter, I ultimately believe that Pokemon has been going downhill since it touched the 3DS. Like, most people know my hatred for X and Y. Like, X and Y are bad games. I mean, they're good games as in step in the right direction because it was a nice 2 to 3D transition. But, like, for the most part, I don't, like, story-wise and, like, everything else, I think they're bad fucking games. Or, I like more than XY, but it's a remake of Gen 3, which are good games. Sun and Moon and Usum did a lot of different things that I liked, but the games just had a lot of hand-holding and the cutscenes are too long. But the, the point is, because I think Gen 5 is one of the best generations, so Gen 5 was a nice high, and then Gen 6 and 7 kind of slowed down, and then Let's Go was, in my opinion, even worse than that, and then now you have Gen 8 coming out, and there's a lot of concerns and questions already. Maybe the, the trend will go on, and, you know, it's going to become the next Ubisoft, the next Activision, the next EA of games that come out every year i don't know why companies do that and why they make games come out every year that doesn't make any fucking sense to me because i don't feel like a year is enough time to actually recreate a whole new game regardless if you're using the same engine the reason why there's some games that take so many years to make actually do well like they're in development like legitimate development for years actually do well because you know yeah i know you can make more money but like quantity over quality right like you want more quality but they care about quantity because they want more money out of it so it's like here's my thing if you were to fix sword and shield obviously i'd probably make the game longer i wouldn't necessarily make the graphics better because the graphics i think are fine for me um i think the animations even though they said they, they cut the mods for better animations the animations still just aren't that good like they reused a lot of animations and i know they probably mean like they're more emphasizing on the dynamaxing and gigamaxing or what you want to call it um animations and that's fine like i obviously those would all be new because that's a new mechanic and they are projecting these mods a lot larger and you know the animations are going to be more extreme that's fine but when you say animations you're kind of leaving this giant blanket of not even just battle animations but i mean like in-game animations like we're talking about like in the story because i've been seeing video clips that i won't put on screen obviously for spoilers of them still doing this in 2019 where they run turn run or like they're talking to you turn start talking to you like it's 2019 why can't you just give us like fluent animations like that's like jump force bad of just like i'm running stop you're over here turn i'm running hello it's like why like that's been like that since gen 6 it's been like that for six years and so like i get the concerns that people have it's the highest grossing um like franchise of all time i understand the concerns i get the frustration i just think the way that they're handling the frustration is incorrect and I feel like they're very, they're being very immature about it. And I feel like if you want to make change, you don't yell. You have to be intellectual about it and keep your comic and be calm and composed. If you want to actually change something, like if I was Pokemon and I was making a game every year and I was worried about not pushing the game farther, if I actually was like pretty adamant I'm on the release date of November fifteenth. I would then hire more developers and hire like third party developers to work on these games and have them to be like 
this team works on animation this team works on re-putting sprites and this team works on storyboarding and the story this team works about cutscene like I don't know how they would do it because obviously I don't make video games, but I would break these teams down. I would use third-party developers to work on specific things on the bells and whistles, like to fill in the minor gaps that like maybe other people can't do because they're stressed. But Game Freak purposely chooses to work with a small team and it doesn't really make any sense. I don't know. Like, I love Pokemon. Pokemon has easily changed my life. Like, you know, it's always been there for me. I've played it for almost 20 years now. It's like, it's a it's a phenomenal franchise. And I have so many memories with Game Freak and Pokemon. I can't even explain how many memories I have. It's just, I understand the frustration. I just think people aren't handling it well. And it's like, regardless of what Game Freak could have said about why everyone, why all the Pokemon aren't there. No matter what the explanation was, the Game Freak could have been like, my mom's dying. They're going to be like, well, and... She ain't making the games, you know, so I just think Game Freak from a business standpoint didn't handle it well um, And then also when they realized that they were in the shitter They then tried to just like they were like in a corner They kind of just like threw out a Hail Mary like well, we actually had to use new models And then when they're about to catch the bag because everyone's like, oh, okay new models. That's fine Someone was like they're the same models and they're like well be like that it's a crazy world we live in so i don't know like i said i'm excited to play the game still because i want to experience the games i am still going to enjoy the games but i am going to also criticize the games i'm so i'm also going to take in what they offer and have like a very a well-rounded opinion once i'm done playing them so i don't know i just wanted to make a video for you guys to upload just because, uh, why not? I recorded two roulette free-for-alls that both got ruined because OBS sucks for some reason. So I just was kind of like, I need a video and I want to do this. And I feel like this is like a pretty solid topic to talk about. So, yeah. I mean, if you guys enjoy, make sure you support. Smash the like button. Support's really appreciated. Definitely check the links in the description down below. We'll be streaming Sword and Shield um, right when the game comes out. So I'll be picking it up on Thursday at 9 p.m. at my one of my local stores uh i'll be coming home we'll be streaming it on youtube you know of us playing through it live blind because obviously i don't really know anything about the game and uh we'll also be doing you know let's play on it we'll be streaming shiny hunting on twitch stuff like that we'll be doing a bunch of stuff with the game so if you guys want to see stuff like that like i said all links in the description down below you can check that stuff out down there follow me on twitter stay up to date with everything and with that being said i'm gonna get the fuck out of here you guys always patty shows i'm out oh young god